Got some pretty exciting news today. Um, basically, just did some testing with some cells I got here. These are five amp hour, very power dense cells. They're rated for um, 500 and something amps continuous, at a, which is 100C discharge from full to dead. They're rated for um, 150C peak, which is 760 amps. They might be 5.1 amp hour cells. I'll have to look that up again. Um, I don't worry too much about that last little point one because that's typically at a discharge rate that's not realistic. My plan, uh, today I managed to test and prove they were able to do over 900 amps peak. Um, we're talking like one second or something. I'm not looking to run them at that level. My plan is for the CRX to run three of these in parallel. Um, 112 in series. Probably going to make modules of 20 cells each, three in parallel. And then those modules I'll be able to use for my other stuff around here that's zero powered, like my new dirt bike here, for instance. Um, in fact, just one of these cells in, in parallel. And so basically building a five amp hour pack up for this thing. Um, I'd be able to have a pack that weighs, they're 126 grams each. I'd be able to have a pack that weighs probably somewhere around seven pounds, five, five pounds, depending on the case and all that stuff. And be able to produce something like 900, well, 900 amps peak, but um, 500 something continuous. So I'd be able to do like one or two laps on a motocross strap, full throttle, and it would bring the bike weight down below what a factory 450 is which would be pretty damn incredible. Um, that's part of what I'm gonna do. I have a pack of these cells here. I'm just gonna flip the camera on. Um, I have a big stack of them here. Close the door, buddy. Um, yeah, I have a big stack of the cells here. Sorry, my shop's a mess right now. I always start a project, get part way through it. Like the dirt bike, I have stuff in order showing up tomorrow, so. I was too antsy on to test these cells. I got a bit of free time today, so I managed to make up my cell tester. I'm gonna put a whole video together so you'll be able to see all the tests, or at least a big chunk of them. Um, I'm not done testing. I need to add a tiny bit of resistance in an elegant way where my load doesn't heat up too fast because I wanna build a test for about five to 10 seconds at the 750 to 800 amp range. So a little more total resistance, but more thermal mass, probably whatever gets hot, the wire or whatever that I use in a bucket of cold water or something to keep that um, resistance pretty consistent. Um, you can see here on the, the graph. The, uh, the big yellow trace column C is um, actually the wattage output. And uh, from that side, I did the did a spreadsheet. You can see that you know it hit over 970 amps for a brief period at 3.01 volts. So you know peaking over 2.9 um, kilowatts, or sorry, over yeah 2.9 kilowatts. So almost three kilowatts from one of those little cells. That's pretty damn incredible. Um, you know what is that like 4.5 horsepower from this little cell? Uh, and that was um, also, that was the third test. So that was with a starting voltage of, um, starting voltage of about 4.1 volts. So the, the cell voltage was down a little bit. It wasn't fully charged at that point. It could do a little more. So definitely do over three kilowatts burst with a full charge. Now, having said that, I pack with three cells in parallel um, it's going to be, I think I worked the math before I'll work it again. It's about six kilowatts of energy on the car. I'll actually work the math right now because, um, I want to make sure I'm accurate on that. So three times, I believe it's five. We'll just call them five amp hour cells. Cause the way I'm going to push them, I'm not going to probably get that last point one amp hour out of them. Um, so 15 amp hours times one, one, one two, those, and then times 3.7. So it'd be 6.2 kilowatts on the car. A typical quarter mile run 
in a fast car, probably use around one and a half kilowatts. My last CRX, as fast as it was, I don't really consider that like it was fast for a front wheel drive car, but it wasn't fast like a like Don Garlitz or something rear wheel drive running, you know, 200 miles an hour in the quarter. So those guys are probably using more around, well, especially the brush setup like they're using, they're probably using over two kilowatts for a run, but an efficient brushless three phase all wheel drive setup, like maybe the new Roadster, probably gonna use around one and a half kilowatts for a quarter mile run. That's kind of just a ballpark estimate. So with six kilowatts on board, I'm gonna use maybe half a kilowatt for a burnout, maybe even a kilowatt for a burnout. I'm gonna have about four to five kilowatts left in that ballpark. You wanna keep the batteries as charged as you can to get that um, base speed of your motor as high as possible. So you're not using as, you use the least amount of fuel we can impossible. As much as I say that, I'm gonna be basically doubling the max RPM with fuel leak and that's kind of how I get there. Um, so yeah, probably in a, should be a good pack size. I could almost get away with just two of these in parallel, but I worked the math out, I think, um, 112 times three times 126, 42 kilograms. So yeah, it's about 120 pounds. Um, times two, maybe it's less. For some reason I was thinking 120 pounds, but um, the math I just worked shows it to be about 93 pounds for battery weight. So a 93 pound battery for the quarter, for the um, CRX to be able to make somewhere close to, um, you know, it's about one megawatt of power from the battery peak, very peak, like second, half a second. Um, it's pretty realistic to think that you would get Actually, it's more than a megawatt. It's 1.3 megawatts or 1. Point, yeah, 1.3 megawatts. Just working the math here, but um, oh no, it's, it's 1.3, 1,344 horsepower. So yeah, about a megawatt. Um, just working the math kind of back and forth and converting between horsepower like and uh, kilowatts, imperial or whatever you want to call it, units and kilowatts kind of throws you for a loop, but yeah, basically a thousand horse horsepower to the wheels is realistic, provided the motors can do what I need them to do and we can make um, the fancy high power controller work for the rear wheels, whatever I'm, I have two options for that and we'll get there. Um, but that's gonna be a brutally fast car, um, especially zero to 60, that's the goal. Insane zero to 60 times, um, having said that, I do want to change the gearing in the leaf reduction unit. Maybe I might even get to a point where I pop that reduction unit off and use something else with around a six, 6.5 to one total reduction to the axles. And maybe that would solve my limited slip problems and all that shit too. So we'll see, I'll figure that out. But yeah, very exciting stuff. These cells, these are game changers. <clears throat> These are gonna be the key to making insane runs. Just imagine a Tesla Roadster probably gonna to have to have a battery weighs somewhere around probably 1300 pounds, 1400 pounds to be able to get the power they need. My battery will make the same power and I'll weigh without enclosure 95 pounds my enclosure design, that's gonna be a tough one. It's not gonna be made for road course racing, it's not gonna be made for street driving, anything like that. It's gonna be um, probably done more for just drag racing where it gets lots of time to cool between runs. Um, the, because the tabs come out each side like this, um, like you can see the there's a heat shrink on the positive tab here. Um, because the tabs come out each side like that and they're nice and big tabs, those, or where you pull the heat out, kind of like the new Tesla design. I think I might've mentioned that in part of this video already. Um, so the trick will be probably to make a, a plastic or a 3D printed enclosure for each set of 28 cells in series. 
um, 28S, 3P or something like that. Make a, an enclosure that's out of plastic with the tops and bottoms of it with electrically isolated but thermally conductive potting, which might have an aluminum heat sink on each side. I'll have to think about that part. Uh, it's got to be crash safe as well, but we'll get there. This is going to be some pretty exciting stuff. Stay tuned. All right, so what I have here is a high power lipo cell. As you can see, the tabs come out of each end and they're nice big fat tabs. These are claimed to be able to do 760 amps. They're a five amp hour cell. I'm setting myself up a <clears throat> poor man's load tester. I have an Arduino set up that I'm able to measure voltage and current with that current sensor. And then basically I can spit that out to a graph and graph it out. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna set this up on <clears throat> a couple of aluminum pieces and basically um, clamp it between the two for some good pressure to hold the cell tight and also pull a little bit of heat out of the cell. The big thing is these tabs are big and fat, so you wanna pull the heat out of the tabs, just like the new Tesla <clears throat> battery design is gonna pull the heat. The plan is to pull the heat, thermally manage them, manage the cells from the tabs on each end. Now they're calling it tab list, but really what it is is a whole bunch of tabs all folded in onto one big huge Glob of tabs, if you want to call it that. So, I'm going to use this and this clamp together. Um, bolt is going to be for the big wire that's going to run to my shunt here, my big, huge one milli ohm shunt. And then basically clamp these together with vice grips. That's the plan, anyway. Um, and then this side will be for measuring voltage. So, that way, you'll be able to get a voltage measurement right at the cell. That's very critical to get an accurate measurement on this. Um, this is just a backup so I can actually in real time display um, 75 millivolts displayed on the fluke will actually give me 70 750 amps. So stay tuned Okay, I'm just about ready to do my first test um, I'm just gonna look at how to record data. My plan is essentially to short this wire Here under the shunt right there that meter should display current um, 75 millivolts and the fluke is going to be 750 amps. That's the temperature of the cell. I got a little dab of hot glue holding the temperature probe right on the side of the cell and that's the actual voltage right at the cell. And then the display there is my graph that Arduino is measuring from the cell for current from that current sensor right there and um, the voltage right at the cell. You can see a one clip is there. One's up there. I might have to move that one down closer to the tab on the input side of the cell. But I think I'm just about ready. I want to um, <clears throat> I want to try and make sure I got Arduino recording this somehow. All right, so I think I have everything kind of working. Basically, this is actually probably a pretty good video to put together for a couple reasons. I had to search quite a bit. Found some German guy on YouTube talking in German, explaining how to data log out of an Arduino to your serial port. Um, then I downloaded a program called CoolTerm. Um, basically, you go in here, you have a little picture of a um, USB to serial adapter, DV9 adapter or something. You click on that, it opens up this CoolTerm window. You go in here. so. I should actually start from the start, shouldn't I? So basically you get it all set up so Arduino actually does what you want. Um, we'll close this so it's out of the way. <clears throat> go into Arduino and we look here. Uh, basically you can go to tools, you can do your serial monitor, you can get your data straight out of there and that's telling me I probably gotta adjust my code to make my current read down minus, you know, down another one or two amps, but you know, 4.19 volts, it's pretty close. Um, roughly two amps, so I just have to calibrate that a little bit. I'll get there. I'm just doing a bit of a test today. It's been so hard not to take this wire and just short it on that shunt and just see what happens for a minute, but I know I'm gonna burn my fingers when I do that, so I'm gonna get some welding gloves. Anyway, so <clears throat> this is measuring my setup right now. That one's my temperature of the cell. That one's the voltage at the cell, and this one's gonna be the current red in millivolts. Um, 
So from here we can close that and then you can also graph in Arduino. So you basically do this serial monitor and this is from the um, plot that I have there. So you can see there's zero amps and there's about 4.2 volts there coming across. So you see the two scales. So to skip through all of that, you got to close Arduino because you can't have two things trying to access the same um, <clears throat> serial port at the same time. So open this and then basically come in here. We go to, oh, options. I have to go to options first. Now I have to set this to COM3. Everything else should be good. We shut that off, or close that, I mean, and then we go to connection. We uh, want to capture text to binary file. So I'm gonna click start. And then this is gonna, so we'll make a little name for it. We'll call it Arduino test. V test, I don't really need a V there. And then we'll click save. And then we'll click connect. And you should see the data start to spit out up there. So that's actually the data, what's measuring from the Arduino. So when I'm done, I'll come back, I'll click disconnect, and then I'll click save. And then I'll put Arduino test two, um, Arduino test two, save it. So then we can come in here and the reason I did this is so I can use LibreOffice. So you can see I've already done that. So we can go in here, we can go file open, um, new spreadsheet, file open. And we'll try to find Arduino test two. Should be here, there it is. So that'll give us this, I believe this is all fine battery is going to be no good anymore because you keep shorting it. Yeah, I got some cells. Basically, I bought 32 cells. i got to reset all my meters. Um, I bought 32 cells. The plan is to... Oh, shit. Um, the plan is to use the 32 cells and build a battery pack of 28Fs, which I can use in the dirt bike for a test and prove the cells in a few other ways. And then I've got four extra cells or six extra cells. I can't remember if I got 32 or 34. Anyways, I got some extra cells. Two of them I'm planning to destroy testing like this. And one of them I sent, or two of them I sent to Luke in um, California is gonna do some testing. I'm just gonna set my phone down, reprop that there. So <clears throat> just to make sure the video shows it, <clears throat> I'm gonna try and show this number at the same time as showing the Multimeter, so I'll zoom out a bit and I'll drag that window down because I've just proven I think the current sensor is calibrated very closely to accurate. So if this says stupid meters, um, this is the voltage of the cell this here and then here. So it's down to 4.1 volts. If this says 0 0.09 on this one, I gotta switch the range so it's accurate. If it says 0 0.09, so that's 90 millivolts, that's actually 900 amps on this cell. So I've got a little setup here with this wire that's getting warm, and I'm just shorting it out by hand on there to see what the peak current would be. So if we're ready, I'm going to do this. I'll, just, I'll start right here just to show the spark. And you can see that. It makes some nice sparks. You can see the, the numbers go away. So now I'm going to try and do it this way just so that the video can show it for all my fans on YouTube. So you can see there, did nine something. And we'll do it one more time, just making sure the voltage doesn't go too low. So it hit over 900 amps on this one cell. <clears throat> That's enough testing for today. I'd like to finish making this a little more elegant for when I'm finished, but definitely done very good and even was able to show this in a graph here with LibreOffice showing over almost a thousand apps out of this one single cell. That's pretty incredible.